Hello everyone. We have today a special. I thought of showing you what's happening in the background, how we do the legacy thing. And part of that is an interview. Well, actually a talk, a conversation between Rebecca and myself. She ask a few questions and I answer them as best as I can. Some technical stuff, how it started, what we did, where we now, what we plan in the future. So, sit back and relax and uh, I hope you enjoy this one. Thank you. Question and answers with my fabulous husband, Quez Kotze. Yay! Can we have applause here, please? So, Kuz, why did you start Legacy Conversation? <laughs> Let me first say, I, I did ask her not to call me fabulous on camera, but you know, Perhaps I am. So to answer you, why did we start Legacy? You know what? It started with a dream. And of course, I had no idea how to do it. And I had even less idea who to contact. And in fact, everything about me uh, is wrong. I have a wrong voice. It's too low. That's why you people sometimes struggle to hear me. He uh, mumbles. He mumbles, yes. I don't speak English that clearly. I don't even speak Afrikaans that clearly, to be honest. <laughs> and my French is not existent. So anyway, it started with a dream, and the only friend I had who I thought might be of interest to all of you was uh, SBF4E, you know, the Special Forces chap. And as it is, we were writing his book, his memoirs, and Rebecca would be doing the editing. And so I said, SBF, we need to talk, we need to record this. And from that, we will anyway, the book will come. And so that's how it started. And I have to say also, you know, we've been busy here for eight months. We're up to 100,000 views a month now, 30, 31,000 hours every month. That's five years, probably even more. And I had amazing feedback, 99% positive. But it started with a dream, like most things in life. Can you tell us a bit about the equipment that you use? Well, since you bought it, I will gladly, gladly tell you about it. Look, when you work with uh, editing and cameras and things like this, it, it really cost a bit of money. We, we got as much second-hand as we could. The camera we're talking from now on is a Canon. I'll put the specifications in here. Some of you asked me. We have a Deity uh, microphone on top of it. I'll put a picture in here for you as well. For all of us, there were some of them who were complaining about the sound. You know what? Buy me a new microphone. But, why are you shaking your head? Because it's a good microphone. I think so. you forgot to kind of explain one thing. It was a dream, but we had set up a studio and Kuz and I had turned this room into a studio. We painted it, we cleaned it, and we found this camera and we've researched for the microphone. And this is really the best microphone you can get for the price. And we really believe that's true. So I had started for my English school, we started doing um, my English courses, putting them, recording them. And I think that had an important part to play because we had the studio, because we had the equipment already, we didn't get it for Legacy. It's like Legacy was born after that project. So I think that's kind of a fun, you know, how ideas, you don't know exactly when or why they come, but the room was there and the knowledge was here. <laughs> and the dream. And yes, we worked on good pictures in here. We, we had to paint the background. We had to redo the entire room, convert it into a studio. We needed the computers though. Well, computers you need is powerful. The ones we got first, well, I'm afraid we had to upgrade a bit, uh, but we're fairly good now with computers. Let's just say for the last two birthdays, what have you gotten for your birthday? The last two birthdays, or is it even three? Well, I believe it's twice, but I got a nice laptop, a very expensive laptop, and the last one was really expensive. <laughs> you know, 64 gigabytes of RAM, Captiva, game laptop, nice cards, everything. But it was, it was needed because when you get guests on Legacy and they start talking for three hours, three and a half hours, then you're talking about files as big as eight or ten gigabytes. And if you don't have a processing power, there's no way you can edit it. Just on that project, I think it's close to 700 videos we had to do in the last year, which we did. And that program is to teach people English, 
across the world because it's online or it will be soon we'll let you know about it but yes when we, the studio was here we had to upgrade on the computers we got the best microphone possible in this one but we don't always use this camera i also have to say that to you sometimes we use the uh, the normal laptops, or the laptops I edit on, that we use the internal, the built-in microphone, which turned out to be actually the best for Zoom. We tried other microphones as well, it didn't work. So again I say, if, if you want to complain about sound, man, then I'm going to tell you now, you buy us a new one. Otherwise, no complaints. And I can also tell you, he spends no time on that computer playing computer games, okay? He's always editing these videos. Hours and hours and hours. Yeah, which brings me to the next question actually is how long does it take for us to, to actually produce a video? And I need to, whenever he says we or us, please know my participation on editing, on organizing for Legacy is minimal. This man is a one man show, okay? He'll constantly use we, but it's a one man show. Well, it's also so I couldn't do it without my lovely wife. That's true. It's her birthday tomorrow. Yes, it is. Yes. We're, not at, we're not mentioning age. No. No, we're not mentioning age. doesn't matter at this age. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Anyway, where were we? You were talking about... Oh, see, I, I distracted him. Yeah, of course you did. You were talking about the hours that, it's, that you spend editing. Yeah, it's about four times. If, if, if somebody like, uh, well, let me not mention names, but if somebody talks three hours, you can think it's between 10 and 12 hours in the background going on. Because what happens is you first have to set it up. Uh, then you go actually for the meeting. You talk a little bit of nonsense in the African way. We don't just start recording. We ask how's the cattle, how's the weather, did it rain? And then sometimes we talk a bit of politics. We, we cut all of these things out. And then what we do is we, uh, we actually start recording. I sit there. You can't see me. Often you will not be able to see me, but I'm sitting in the background. The guy talking can see me. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay, okay, right, no, no. Don't want to hear that or whatever. So we give signals, we go on, we, we actually record this thing. And then the guest leaves. But his job is also not over. So what then happens is I have to listen to the entire thing from front to back. We edit it on... Uh, Filmora Wondershare or something, mm -hmm. Wondershare Filmora thing. Mm -hmm. The latest one which we also inherited from the school, thank you for that. So we edit on, on that and then we start adding the pictures, we started a adding the little videos in. Once I'm done with that, I have to upload it to um, Cloud and I send a link to the guest. Guests have to look at it, make suggestions, then we edit it again. And sometimes we do this three times, but by the third time, I get obnoxious. I get seriously obnoxious because I only have this much time. So I ask people, please look at it, make your changes. Thereafter, we can do it once more, but not more. And then we have to upload it further. Then we have to upload it actually to YouTube and from YouTube also to Rumble. We have to put in the descriptions. We have to schedule it. And then the actual day when the video comes out, I have to take this link and I have to put it on Telegram. I have to uh, get my mate to Val in uh, somewhere in Durban. He's running the Facebook page. I will never be on Facebook, so I, Facebook if I can help it. So he will have to put it on there. And I have to send the link to the actual guy who's doing the talk. And on YouTube. Yes, it's on YouTube as well. And then we spread the word, people come and look. I have to then look at every single comment. Why? Because I can be held legally responsible. That's why I always say to people I don't hesitate ever to ban somebody. If someone comes He likes a... banning people. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. <laughs> but if somebody's got an attitude or he starts attacking the case or he's unreasonable, you know what? It's easier for me just to press a button. Goodbye. Of course he can come back. I mean, he can create a fake name like most people do. And then he just comes back if he opens his mouth again or his fingers talks quicker, quicker than what his brain is thinking, well, I'll ban him again. I have no choice actually. It's, it's not a matter of this or that. It's a matter of if, if no, he's when you see it, some of those comments, you yeah. understand why he gets a smile when he bans them because it, it's nice to have that power to be able to say you don't have to argue with the guy, you don't have to defend, you just go bing. 
Yeah, you can see them actually quite quickly. You can see a trove, yeah. you know, just the way they write is, is it's just insulting. Some of them keep coming back, you know, and you can see when a guy had a few drinks, a few up or something wrong with him. But they write in exactly the same style. So any detective listening here will know what I'm talking about. You read the affidavit, uh, intelligence officers as well. You read the affidavit, you read the comments, you can immediately link them to whoever, you know, made it, even if it's a different name. Then you go and look, see, okay, when was this account created? Oh, yesterday or today. Well, okay, goodbye. But I don't like doing it, actually. No, I, I would prefer to be where we know. We're 99.99% positive. I love it. I mean, this show has been doing good. Really good. I think many, many of the people who spoke there said to me afterwards, because I feel better. You know what? I got this off my chest. Mm -hmm. I know my grandkids are going to be able to look at this. Uh, I, I feel good. And I learn as well. I must tell you, sometimes I sit there and I think to myself, oh, <laughs> you people, you know, I've heard the rumors, but... You, you actually went and, and, and did the job. And you've had some really fantastic feedback from people. I mean, every morning he gets up and he has really mostly positive feedback and sometimes stories that are really emotional. Yes, yes, I do get a few emails from people and thank you for that. I yeah. read all of them. Yeah. And they would say to me, look, uh, this means so much to me or can I contact that guy? I just want to tell him thank you. Or, mm -hmm. I haven't seen the man in 50 years or whatever, or sometimes when we Even talk... Even that's how that man died, remember this? That one yeah. was... wow. Yeah, there was one instance, I think it was free to battalion, where, where some members died, unfortunately, where their souls rest in peace. And uh, some of the family members contacted us and they said, we never knew. And then, yes, it's touching, you know, it's touching. I got goosebumps. Goosebumps, me too. Goosebumps, because we see these things and we know the value of what we're doing. All right, now we need to ask you how much internet is used because you're all just wondering that important question. Well, yeah, this is a bit of a technical thing to show you the background. Uh, 250 gigabytes a month easily, even more. Uh, thank God we got that from the school as well, Rebecca School. We're just working on the internet there. Internet's quite quick in Switzerland. so. Uh, so we're grateful, but, but yes, we, we burn through gigabytes. As, as I said to you, if you have one, let's say, 10 gigabyte file, I have to upload it to cloud, I have to download it, not download it, but I have to upload it again after the changes, then I have to upload it to, say, uh, YouTube, and then to Rumble, you work it out. It's easily 50 to 60 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be done with, with uh, slow internet or bad internet or limited internet. Just not possible. Was it worth it, Mr. Kotze? Uh, financially, no. It wasn't worth it. You can ask my wife here. I normally work 12 to 13 hours a day on this. I normally start just after breakfast at about 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, sometimes we have more than one interview uh, in, in a day. That's, that's usually what happens is somebody may be in Canada or New Zealand and then we have to change the times. Uh, no, it was not worth it financially. We didn't make money. We tried, when we got a thousand uh, views, uh, no, not views, uh, what do you call them? Subscribers. Yeah, subscribers. When we got a thousand subscribers, YouTube changes. You get all sorts of new things. And they then get the right to put their own ads on your videos. Now, to prevent that, because I don't know if they're going to put Brooklax on or Bolton or whatever, you know, or, or hot liquor, which I don't agree with. I don't drink anything. Neither does she. So I thought to myself, okay, no, okay, I'll become part of your program. And then at least I can tell when you can't put the video or your ads, which I haven't approved and cannot approve legally, I can, I, I can then force him to put it right in the beginning, which you can skip. Uh, but that didn't work out. I think we made $140 in uh, eight months. Yeah. Now let me tell you, that's not enough. $140 will not even oh, bring we, you... We have the Zoom, the monthly yeah. Zoom price yes. even, which isn't a lot. We're thankful for everything. We're thankful for the technology that's available, but yeah. No, it costs money. It costs money to produce. What's shocking for me is that YouTube... It, it, at first we were all excited because it looked like it was growing so fast. And then, oh my goodness, it kept going backwards and it's, it was unbelievable. It's yeah. like they are making money off of you for sure. Um, yeah. 
if this is on YouTube, they're probably going to ban it now. No, they can ban it. It's fine because we'll just go over to Rumble. No, this is this is really not uh, unless you have absolute millions and millions. You don't really make yeah. any money from that. Um, so, so we stopped that. I cancelled all of that and said, yeah, just let it go. Same with this Patreon story. Sorry, we never did the Patreon or whatever or the other things I built in because you know what? I take off. I take fifty percent. And then you still have to pay tax on whatever you make. Mm. So you can see to yourself, it's just not worth it. It's like book sales, you know. You, you, the author never gets more than about 50. Do I say that right? 30%. 30%. Yeah, I can't say that word properly. Free. 30%. That, that's, what, um, that's what the author gets. Uh, because the taxes are deducted and then Amazon takes their part as well. So 70% of what you pay for that book, you don't even reach. Reach or offer. Which it's brings not us worth it. to our next question, which he didn't prepare. Who is GMJ and what relationship does he have to this channel? No, I cannot answer that. Oh, he's, he's an author that has written how many books? 52. Yeah, and um, you know what's shocking to me is that book sales from what I hear, have increased, whereas SW's book is doing fantastic. So thank you all who support SW for that book, which is has been really fun to watch. But this George M. James guy, who in my opinion, really writes a story that you people, if you're not interested in it, I don't know who is. It's got, it's got all that you people are talking about. And it is based on fact. It's not just a fiction book. And you'll see where the fact is. And I just can't believe that, you know, if you enjoy legacy, maybe the problem is, Kuas, you're giving too much content. They don't have time to read a book. Ah, this is the problem. I think he should cut down. Well, you know, I, I have to listen to my wife. So, yeah, there might be these videos. <laughs> So you're like, hey man, my wife's already complaining. I'm on this thing hours every week, you know. Well, you we've people, had we've had emails like that. You yeah, know? No, no, no. We had quite a few emails. Threats like of that, divorce like. from the other partner because they're stuck to the listening to legacy. So maybe that's the reason. Yeah, that's probably the reason. Anyway, but it it really is and it, it Really, give those books a try. Really, you're going to like them and it will support a very good cause because there is a direct link here. And um, yeah, that would really, really help us out. Yeah. Besides the GMJ books now, we're going to start doing the, the what do you call it, the one minute ad. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get businesses, other people, they're going to pay, we'll make the ad about one minute long, put it in front of a video and perhaps that will help to support the channel. Because yeah. I can tell you now, we cannot go and keep on doing this indefinitely on our own. So please don't criticize if we are trying things to get a bit of money here. Please don't criticize it and even just take the one minute to watch it. I mean, you, you get bombarded whenever you're on YouTube or something else. You're getting bombarded by ads everywhere. And this is an honest try. It's like, yeah, we want to continue doing this. We're unfortunately not unfortunately not in a position where we can afford to just give all that time for free unfortunately even me with a school that i've had for years and years believe me especially the last two years have been really really tough and that's not to complain i'm not complaining i'm just stating facts so and to let you know that it, it really is really is appreciated kuz loves doing this i haven't seen him so motivated um, not only that, he's just the perfect man for this. I've always known he's brilliant. People here in Switzerland don't always know that because <laughs> he's a different, you people know that, but he's a different person. And what's in that head of his is remarkable when it comes to <laughs> weapons. And believe me, we are so opposite. When it comes to his knowledge, I have zero of that. But believe me, there's things that I have knowledge which he has zero of, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, normally that's the arty farty stuff, but when it comes to weapons, things like that, I really do know what I'm talking about. And yeah. of course, military history. Yeah. 
And I think that's it. That's your question and answer session. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed yeah. it. Um, it was a pleasure to meet you all. Yeah, you see, she actually exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing any of those interviews that he does. No way. Uh -uh. <laughs> no. no, I wouldn't even know the name of anything. <laughs> all right. And that's it. Bye. Bye-bye.